yeah, I'm going to make it so everyone can share streams. So we are here tonight in the UK, afternoon in Atlanta, very, very early in the morning in Australia where David is. And we haven't got our darling friend Medina with us today because Medina is absolutely flat out with her consults at the moment. So good job, Medina. You're doing an amazing job there helping lots of individual people. So um, that's the reason why Medina's not here in our normal round table. So before we start, how are you all doing? How are you? Ladies first, Bryce, how are you doing? Well, I'm exhausted because we had our, our awesome time change uh, in, in America. So we lost an hour of sleep, which um, I hear that they decided not to do that anymore. But the last time will be November of 2023, which don't know why they're going to continue doing it what like three more times but <laughs> isn't the three significant though you right. say it three more times oh my god it comes up it's One, like we're two, living in a parallel universe like what nothing makes sense anymore make it make sense so i'm exhausted oh. losing that one hour of sleep but it'll 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 work itself out so and david very very early for you again how are you doing yeah no it's actually i made it on time today because i I kind of woke up at about 4.30 for some reason. And I'm overall, I'm good, but I, I don't think I've been actually, I'm still not 100% after the first psychic attack. And then I think I had another one last week. Not, not so bad, the one I told you about, Catherine. Yeah. That bad. Well, but I still have these images and these, all these different things. And uh, as I spoke to Bryce about just yesterday, I have, I have this entity attached to me and I can feel it at night. Like it's, I'm trying to sleep and it kind of like it's in my bed or it's on my back. And I just, you know, and it's really odd. And I was going to tell this friend of mine about it. And literally that morning, she sent me a, a video that JC did with, uh, what's her name? She did, a, he did, a, John Claude did a video with a woman who does that kind of thing. She clears the entities and things. And she sent me that video before I even told her about it, which is quite interesting. So I watched that for most of the video and I was like, that's, that's exactly what I'm feeling, right? And that's what I'm going through right now. So thanks for sending it. But yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm good. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some things going on. David, I have a lot of experience with this. So I will email you <laughs> privately. Um, I, will, I get attacked a lot So um, since I was a kid. So I will, um, yeah. Wait, it's so really we'll important. It. It, it is really important. And it's weird. I mean, I've had, I'm... Um, I have had a, a, a really interesting few weeks, and that's the way I like to phrase things these days, really interesting, um, which is a polite, polite way of saying a lot of realisations coming through. And I'm really sort of changing where my focus is. I'm going to take some time off next week and really consolidate some of my thoughts. And, and, and you know, we're going to talk tonight a lot about emotions, about what we're doing ourselves in terms of the your love challenge, etc. because it's so, so important. We're all going through these different things at the same time. And, and, you know, it's a real roller coaster. And I think looking at the comments from the listeners, a lot of people are going through that. And I think all of us were just talking off camera, really concentrating on your own self-development is so, so important at this time because you can't give advice to others unless you really work on yourself as well. So, yeah. Bryce, before we kick off, can you share your love challenge with us? So, this yeah, is I'm super excited about this, guys. So I posted this on Twitter a while ago is this picture it says i love you you're probably thinking you don't even know me but if people can hate for no reason i can love and i got so many res positive responses from it so and i don't know who originally made this poster so if that person is out there and you see this contact me because i want to give you credit so somebody on my feed on twitter suggested that we try to do this worldwide and so i put a little challenge out the deadline is next monday the 21st of march um so you make a sign for your yard window or car that says i love you but that sign says um take a photo or video of the sign if you want to be in the photo hop in if not no worries if you want to keep your identity private totally respect that um, send the picture to esoteric Atlanta LC at gmail.com. So this is a separate email address specifically for this project. And LC stands for love challenge. So esoteric Atlanta LC at gmail.com. Um, you can include your name if you want your name to be placed in the reel, or if you want like your business, like I got some photos from Australia. So some awesome Reiki practitioners and I have emailed back and said, 
let me know if you want me to put your business on the reel. I'll be totally glad to do that because that's what we're about is helping each other out. Um, and put your state, if you're in a state here in the United States or a province in your country, in your country. Um, also, obviously, don't think it needs to be said, but if English is not your first language, if you live in a country and that English isn't the first language, put it in your, your mother tongue. And I'll put what country it's from. And so what we're going to do is once I get all the pictures in, I'm going to put them together on a reel um, of everybody all over the world putting this these signs up. And I'll share that reel with all you guys. We can blast it all over all over the Internet. You know, if the mainstream media wants to inject, um, let's say, fear into our world, well, we can inject love. So. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it's on my community tab. So if you if you want more of want to see this, it's right, right on my community tab, Esoteric Atlanta. It's also the picture is on my Twitter, but Twitter doesn't let let you put this many words. So you have to go on the community tab if you need all the notes. So yeah, by uh, March twenty first, Monday, March twenty first, um, send it in, and we'll get it up and get it out there. And your sign will be in the uh, in the um, video. Like if you live in a big city like me, you probably can't put it in your yard because it's a city. So put it in your window. You know, put it in your car window, you know, get your kids involved, you know? So, um, so yeah. So who, and again, whoever made this sign, I applaud you. I wish I knew who it was because I would love to give you credit for that. So not my idea. It was this person's beautiful idea, whoever this human is. So thank you to the universe, to this human for doing this. Oh, that's so lovely. And it just ties up so much with what we were talking about earlier about how, I think all of us are feeling the need. We're noticing an awful lot going on about us, but we're really feeling a need to look at, you know, what's going on with ourselves, what's triggering us, where do we feel we really need to develop ourselves and how can we share that um, for other people that are going through different things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. We're all humans. Well, most of us are humans. <laughs> so... <laughs> so okay. <laughs> maybe not the politicians but oh, we're human so. oh, i just love it i just love it i must say it's been one of those days today so today i've got my lima tail on <laughs> so i've been walking around with my lima tail all night and it's quite cold here so i might have to wrap it around me imagine what you could do with the lima tail anyway that's for another show as well um so david what do you think what have you been working on for yourself at the moment well, first of all, I think it's a great initiative, right? And for someone who who want, who doesn't uh, maybe want to put it in their yard, maybe they can get it tattooed on their chest or on their arm or something and go the extra mile. If someone does that, I will bring you on my show and have you talk about your experience <laughs> if you get that tattooed on you. So large back piece or something. <laughs> Just make it sure it's spelled right. Just make sure it's spelled right. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of words there. There's definitely a potential for something to go wrong, but they're all pretty simple words, so it should be okay. <laughs> but you never know. Uh, to, answer Catherine, uh, to answer your question, Catherine, I'm kind of going something through, uh, through something very similar as you. Like, I'm kind of at this stage now where I'm kind of just trying to decide what direction should I go. I mean, I started the podcast, but I'm just kind of like, I kind of, and it may be something to do with the psychic attack, or I don't know, but I'm just feeling like I've, I've kind of lost all zest to almost do anything at all. And I'd, it's mm -hmm. really odd. Like, my energy's been zapped a bit, and, and uh, I still enjoy doing music. I still enjoy doing the work that I do daily, which is writing. But I'm kind of like, I don't even want to, I, I'm, I didn't even put up the video that we did last two weeks ago. Like, I just, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I, just, and yeah. I didn't even, you know, I was like, I don't even want to do, I don't want to do anything. You know, I just want to have a break. And maybe I should have a break. Maybe I should have two weeks off and just kind of rest and recuperate and recollect and then really figure out what I want to do and then make a proper decision about doing that. Uh, and in terms of, like, for instance, you know, I want to make money from music, like a good amount of money, like that I can sustain myself without having to, you know, that's been one of my biggest goals. But I'm just like, I don't even know. I don't, that, that could mean many different things. That could mean you know, building your own fan base and selling your own songs. That could mean doing sync, like licensing for TV shows and movies and things like that. That could mean uh, playing gigs. Well, I can't play any gigs, you know, anyway, because I'm not allowed in the, in the bars, but that could mean that, you know. But uh, it, it, I think my, my point is, is that we might have a goal 
that we want to do. We want to achieve something, but there are so many ways to achieve that goal. Like you can do some of them, maybe more tiring, some of them, maybe less tiring and more, more work, you know, work around your schedule or whatever it is, but we need to figure out what we, what we want first and, and really, and then figure out a plan on how to get there. But at this point, I'm kind of like a little bit, a little bit confused, a little bit kind of, uh, unsure about like i don't you know i don't even i like talking to people i like talking to you i like talking to to you guys and i like talking to the people that have my podcast but i can't even be bothered uploading that sometimes you know like i i mean i haven't i've got I release one every day sorry every every wednesday so i've got to upload it today but i haven't done it yet ordinarily i would be like i'd upload it a few days in advance you know schedule it and everything but i'm just i just you know i just can't be bothered and i just don't know what what the deal is i th- we say something in, in yoga um trust the process right and sometimes we forget that resting is actually part of the process um and i, I mean i know what that, it sounds like you're on the borderline of, of burnout mm. yeah which maybe. i can relate to that it's and and i and, and you know i don't think i think that a lot of people don't know how much it takes to run a youtube channel it's a full-time job to upload, to edit, to, you know, it's, it takes a lot. And so you have to give yourself a little bit of a, of, of a break, not be so hard on yourself. Like if this is a lot, it's the full-time job. I mean, Catherine, we've talked about this a lot, that this is a full-time job for us. Um, and especially if you're also researching on the side, it's, I probably work 12 hours a day, you know, most days, you know, so I, 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 David, you, you deserve, if you need to take a break, that's, and that's what a great example that is for someone who holds a platform to like, say like, I'm going to take a break for a couple of weeks. That's a huge example to set for people that fault that it's okay. It's okay. And isn't that the Western culture though? Isn't that one of the problems is that we're so busy keeping up with the Joneses. We're so busy, like trying to survive that we forget that resting is ne- necessary too. It's necessary, yeah. you know? Yeah. So maybe it's not a bad thing that you're in this this space. Maybe it's just time to be in this space for a moment and time to like settle into that and just take a breather. I'm doing yes. exactly the same, David. For the next couple of weeks, I've left a very minimal um, skeleton schedule in mm-hmm. because it's like, Bryce, you and I have been doing our meditation series and we've had to postpone a couple of the um and the series that we've got planned, which is going to be amazing because of guest availability. But it's like when you're looking at the meditation, the manifesting or anything, any sort of creation, often it's the space between the thoughts, between the breaths that is the most important and where the magic comes. And I think we're energetically going through such shifts on a personal and a planetary level that allowing time to pause and feel what comes through in that space for me is absolutely crucial. And it's certainly something I've realized that I've got to do. And, and it's been really interesting to see the process because it's amazing how much that, that stirs up reactions in others who can then recreate the most ridiculous stories out of things yeah. because you haven't mentioned something. I mean, I did a, a podcast with um, Danny, the spiritual therapist uh, last week. And at the end, she asked me, who would you recommend people to uh, listen to? And I said, Bryce, David, Medina. And then I got all these comments about why didn't you mention this person, you know, one person in particular. And I was like, because there's room for everyone. You just, you know, it was bizarre. And I think this is the thing. It's like, it's interesting how... I think I would encourage anyone who's listening to this. And and when we're talking about this, as Bryce and I always say, when we're having these discussions, we're talking to ourselves as much as anyone who's listening. But it's really important to see if something triggers you, recognize that's yours, Mm -hmm. not theirs, not the person that said it or does done it. And I think everyone needs a break and everyone needs time to just quieten and see what beauty comes through yeah triggers are your golden nuggets that's where you know that's um it's where the interesting stuff is that's where the un- where you're uncomfortable where you feel that reaction that's yeah that is yours because we as we signed on we were talking about you know working on ourselves and your emotions that you that you that you put on things 
Those are your emotions, right? Reality is perception. So how David and Catherine see something is not how I would see something because we have different perceptions of the same thing. And so my perception is not theirs. It's mine to use as a tool to understand myself better, just as their perceptions are theirs to use as a tool. And um, when we project those triggers onto other people or make it somebody else's fault that we have that trigger, that's us ne neglecting our own self-development and our own work. And I know the narrative right now is that triggers are bad, don't trigger people, but that's obviously the narrative is all, whatever opposite, it's the opposite, right? Triggers are golden. They're, they're juicy. They're interesting. You know, it's like I had this, um, this uh, David Grieg, my, one of my teachers, we get so excited in the Mysore room, you know, the young girls that could do anything, handstands, no problem, whatever. But when like an elderly man would come in with like a big belly and like couldn't touch his toes, he would get so excited because now we have something to work with. Now we have something to work with. And it changed my perception on things. Watching him that way, I was like, oh. So these obstacles, not just in the yoga practice, because the yoga practice is supposed to mirror your life, but the things that happen in life that are difficult or there's restriction there, that's where interesting stuff is. That's where the, the juice is. That's where things are golden is because that's where you're going to learn about yourself. It's not the easy stuff. It's not the easy peasy, you know, funny videos that just make you laugh. It's when you're trick. Okay. I'm triggered. This is the interesting part. What, why am I triggered? What is this telling me about myself? And we know with the universe that if there are lessons you need to learn and you refuse to learn them, guess what? Those lessons don't go away. They just keep coming back and coming back and coming back until you actually pause and say, let me look at this. I need to look at this. Yeah, they say, uh, if, you, if it triggers you, you're meant to hear it. I like that. What, what, it's like, it's just like going through, I don't know, climbing a mountain where there's steps there. You know? You're not going to really achieve much if you're just walking on these, or there's like a bridge everywhere. Like, you know, you need to have challenges in life. You need to have moments where you're forced to problem solve, for lack of a better term, because you need to figure out what, what, the, what the core of the issue is. So you can move past it and get to get to new heights. Yeah. And recognizing that we were talking earlier about how when you, you know, recognizing that there's something you need to work on, recognizing that you're being triggered, recognizing you need to break, that's a really core cool part of your spiritual growth. Because and also having different conversations like this, just like you were saying, Bryce, we don't need to agree with each other. Mm -hmm. We've got a close enough friendship that we, we can, I, I want to have these conversations with other people because there's no point. I can just see it from my limited perspective. And, you know, I want to expand my consciousness. And the only way I can have expand the consciousness is by other people bringing different things to the table. And sometimes I might disagree with it first of all and then go away and ponder on it and think, oh, actually now i see it differently um and sometimes you might not and sometimes it might be years later it doesn't matter that's not the point is it the point is 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 it expanding your consciousness mm -hmm. because if not what we all here for and and it's so funny how i say this a lot you know don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. but it's so funny that people can idolize someone and just be so great and then they say one thing they don't like and everything's gone and in this current situation you know i heard a really good interview with robbie williams which was done a year ago and, and we've got so caught up in the narrative um we don't know a lot of what we're talking about we're having conversations we're we're going on our intuition we're tuning in does this resonate with me does it not but then the next week we might get a different bit of information that where we might course correct or think something different. And I think it's the biggest thing this last year has really taught me is it's very easy to get sort of washed along with the tide of emotion on whatever side or opinion you think about. But when you stop, like you were saying, you're being called to do so, David, 
it's really, really important because it's in those times when you do stop that you actually think, okay, how much of this do I really agree with and how much is me as being caught along with other people's enthusiasm, for example? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's healthy to have a break from social media. I, another thing that I wanted to mention is I really don't like social media. Like mm -hmm. I, I, prior to the thing that kicked off two, two years ago, I never posted a Facebook update ever. I, I just like to keep my... I just had the thing there to kind of just connect with people that I wanted to connect with around the world. Uh, never post, barely ever posted anything. And if I did, it would have been like a song lyric or a funny quote from a TV show. But then obviously as my consciousness grew, I stopped doing those kinds of things. And I started posting, uh, you know, more personal development stuff when I started doing that. But then after a while, I just went back to normal and stopped posting altogether. And then uh, when this thing kicked off, I started posting about that. But since I've, since the last couple of weeks where I, I really just had a break, I don't really go on Facebook anymore. And I have, all I've done is post my, my uh, podcast episode once a week. Uh, and another thing, which was, which was quite hypocritical, <laughs> which I may, maybe I'll go into it, maybe I won't, but uh, I just had to post it because I felt compelled to, because it was quite hypocritical what the, what we're being told. Uh, I'll just tell you my, my, uh, Somebody in my family had a fall and they went to hospital and their partner who's had all the, all the necessary things to, to, to be able to continue in normal everyday life uh, wasn't allowed to go visit her because, because they were worried that he would spread it. <laughs> and he's, he's been fully, he's been probably triple done. And I'm like, well, that's just, that's just ridiculous. I had to post that because it was just so stupid. But uh, I digress. So, yeah, I haven't been on Facebook. And, yeah, I don't, I don't really like social media. I mean, it's it's good for some things. It's really bad for other things. Like we, I, I'm sure you guys have seen documentaries about how bad it is. Um, but yeah, it's having that break from social media because there are so many thoughts and feelings on, on and emotions through people's posts and people's comments. And you see people being triggered all the time and, and it can really, it really can alter your, your perception of reality in many ways. Yeah. And it's Catherine, and I've talked about the ego as well. And that, of course, is a huge, a huge topic in any spiritual practice. And the ego is the false, the false sense of self. It's an illusion. And the ego is fragile. And so sometimes when we find ourselves in that state of being triggered, what the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, is trying to show you is where you're clinging to your false sense of identity versus your real authentic sense of identity, which is pure consciousness. And, you know, as far as totally getting rid of the ego, well, that's kind of the unsolvable riddle. But when you know that that's there, when you know it exists, you can then identify it for what it is. And it's funny when we talk about like our perception, that's why in traditional spiritual practices, it is imperative that each person have a teacher. And this is not somebody that you lionize, that you put on a pedestal. It's just somebody who has mastered something more than you as more experienced. And they're therefore, they're able to catch you in your blind spots. And, and every teacher has a teacher because we all have blind spots and we, when we have no one there to point out our blind spots to us. That's when we're able to fall into the toxicity of the ego where, it, where it gets out of control and it borderlines narcissism. And that's not, that's not conducive for any type of self-development unless you have to go there in order to have a blow up in your face to show you it was an illusion to begin with. You know, I know, Catherine, we've talked about this, like when you get to that point of self-reflection there, there becomes this like beautiful vulnerability that's way more attractive to see that vulnerability in someone than to see this false sense of like triggered ego. You know what I'm saying? Like when somebody is humble and they're able to admit when they've made a mistake or admit when maybe they didn't act properly, that's attractive because that's showing that they're actually practicing like pratyahara, which is a sense of self-study. That there's nothing more attractive and more inspiring than to see somebody actively involved in their own self-study. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfectly. And I think you can see a lot about where you're at um, with that, with how you're reacting to others and how to so coming back to your love message at the start. So let's take an example that would be familiar because people are going to be watching this on YouTube. So if you're the type of person that watches to criticize and leave a negative comment, 
then that is just a mirror being held up to you. However irritating you find that, to hear me saying that, to show you where you're at, because it's like jealous people hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. And, and, and it's so, so true. And when you actually get to embody that and realise that it is just a reflection, because if you're truly um balanced in yourself and what we're looking for is balance not perfection and i think that's a really important thing to to bring out you're not looking that you're never going to react to anything you're looking about how quickly you can course correct you know we don't want to be zombies no no <laughs> you know some people want us to be zombies but we don't want to be zombies so emotion is a really good thing it's a, a a really important thing but what you're looking at is is can you control it are you controlling your emotions or are they controlling you? And for me, a really good way, you know, it's very obvious. Are you triggered to say something negative or are you happy just to let it go? Or even better, are you happy to say something positive to shift the vibration? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm um, oh, sorry, go ahead, David. No, all I was going to say is like any, the ego, the ego is so, uh, it always has to be right, obviously. But you, whenever, whenever you see something that that, you, that triggers you, all your tri- all that your reaction to is a belief. Mm-hmm. You can change. You know, your beliefs. You can change your beliefs. So you can change them in an inst- in an instant if you want to. You just need to look at it differently. Whatever yeah. the, whatever the thing is. So it, it's interesting. And when you and obviously we've all had our beliefs challenged many times over the last couple of years. Uh, and, and if you choose to, you can have your beliefs challenged even beyond that, you know, without, without the, the last two years, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's, that's, I think, my point. It's, it's when you don't actively seek to challenge your own beliefs, the more you do it, the easier life is going to get. Oh, yeah. The more open you – it's like um, I was trying to explain to someone um, off of camera because obviously – 99% of the yoga you see in the Western world isn't actually yoga. It's been completely, completely just obliterated by what the true teachings are. And I was explaining about this one video. I was explaining about the girl said it perfectly. That the more her heart broke, the more she opened. And um, when we're going through a, 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 a practice, whether it's yoga or any type of other spiritual practice of self-discovery, there's many different paths to go through that, that self-study. Um, we are going to hit nuggets of pain. There is going to be um, self-destruction in a, in a painful way and a lot and challenging that ego and challenging those beliefs. And I remember my get David Grieg saying once when he asked Guruji, like is, is because the physical practice is painful too. And he asked Guruji, 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 is this pain necessary? And Guruji said, yes, pain is real. Pain is real. And so when you feel that emotion, that trigger of pain, it's real for you. And that is your beacon of light to guide you, to open you more. Does that make sense? It's like necessary to sit into that nastiness in order to crack yourself open more to understand your own self. So you become a healthier person for yourself and for the world. Because when, you, when you're able to challenge those held beliefs, right? When you're able to challenge what you believe, and see other people's perspectives. Your heart opens to them. Your heart opens to what, what they're going through, what even though their perception might be different, or maybe they're not at the place where they can self-accept, but you can have that empathy. You can have that compassion because you see the same, you see the same light, the same soul in them that you carry in yourself. And that is, and that all comes from embracing those triggers. That starts by embracing the triggers. It starts by embracing the darkness within you, the shadow within you. And actually, Sean Stone said that. I thought it was brilliant. On an interview, he said that what we see happening in the macro with this group of people, these horrific things that they've done, even though none of us have done those, those horrific things, nor would do those horrific things. It's triggering us because we can recognize through that, the shadow within ourselves Mm -hmm. and what we need to work on, even though the action might be different, we're not going to go do it. We would, I can guarantee you, none of us would ever do what they've done, but we all have to look at that shadow within ourselves too. That's part of being human. That's part of humaning being on a third density planet. I can always remember once that, you know, going to, it, it was actually a few times I went to church, but this was a really lovely vicar, you know, very approachable and really, really lovely. And they said, you know, when you 
can live your life like it's a movie that's being streamed to everyone real time and you can be happy with what's being shown and there's no bits you want to erase then you've got a right to start criticizing others and I think it's so true because I don't think there's a single person that I've ever met that hasn't got something they wouldn't want other people to know about you know that, that, that all of us have had behaviors that we might not be proud of at some stage and some of us might have suppressed those and not want or want to blame or make excuses but the whole point is it comes back to, to again is we're not trying to be perfect we're just trying to recognize and course correct earlier and you know, like I always say with Joe Dispenza, you, you don't have to reach rock bottom. You don't have to get a terminal illness or have something horrific happen in your life to realise you want to make changes. You can do, and there's no worries if that's the route that you're consciously or subconsciously choosing, but you also can learn to recognise things a lot quicker so you don't have to get to that stage. And, you know, I've been through both. I've been through things where I've completely just ignored shut off, ignored shut off the lessons and boy, oh boy, have they got louder. And now, touch wood, I don't know, who knows what tomorrow brings, but now I can recognise them a lot quicker because I've been through that process. I've been through, and looking back, hindsight's a wonderful, looking back, you can see, yeah, I really did shut that out. I shut that message out. I did know, my gut did know. Yeah. I just chose to ignore it because my ego was in control at that stage. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, I think always being proactive about about everything is so much better than being reactive. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's kind of a really obvious thing to say. But a lot of us live in the reactive state, don't we? We always kind of just go, "Oh, it's not so bad now." You know, I can kind of just continue what I'm doing, and then I can't really bother doing anything about it. Um, but then it gets really bad, and you're forced to. Um, yeah. I think. I think the other thing you mentioned about your life being a movie is a really great analogy because we all have a, you know, what do you want your movie to look like? You know, mm -hmm. do you want your movie to, like, you know, for, for a long time, like 10, 12 years, 10 years, I was working a job that I absolutely loathed. And that, that was my movie. My movie was waking up every day, doing the same thing, hating my existence and just getting drunk all the time. And, and I know a lot of people share that, that same experience. Uh, but that's not the movie that you want to create for yourself, I'm sure. You know, like, what is it that you want your main character? What do you want to be doing? Do you want to be adventuring a lot? Do you want to go to the outdoors? Do you, uh, you know, do you want to be passionate and pursue your passions and, and live with integrity and, and, uh, and love? Or do you want to live uh, in a world of escape and kind of just, you know? Sorry, I cut myself off then. Can't no, that's right. You look like you just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine for the future just dropped in. <laughs> Tell us what's going on in the future, Catherine. <laughs> Actually, you, kind of, you kind of just reminded me of that scary clown movie that I, that I told you about. He was doing that, that exact same pose. That he just oh, up. I've got to be so yeah. careful what I do with my hands now. Oh, I know. Yeah. Can we just talk on that for a second, guys? None of us are in that group, that club. If we accidentally do something with our hands because we're talking with our hands, it means nothing. <laughs> Oh my God, black and white tail. Is that going to, so people going to get upset about that? Now, David, I'm going to do an unobtainable plug now. Have you been watching my manifest series on my channel? Because it sounds so simple and it's such a cliche, but this is what I am just loving is just encouraging people through our meditation talks, through the manifest to say that again, like you said, Bryce, there's so many different ways to get there, but consciously creating rather than reacting in all the time is just so much nicer. <laughs> yeah. And it was actually, you know, a lot of different spiritual practices, not just yoga, will use the gross body, the physical body as your main teacher. And so if you mm. think about it from the physical body's perspective, if anybody's been like an athlete, we know things about body alignment. Now think about this. If your knee is out of alignment or your shoulders out of alignment, doing something, if you do it a thousand times with it out of align alignment, okay, no problem. A thousand one times you have a problem. And that's the same thing with being, being able to consciously make sure you're not re 
not reacting to the reaction, but you're able to watch it. It's keeping that, that, that intention in alignment, just like the physical body, because as we were talking about with these obstacles we face in life that come up over and over and over and over again, until we actually deal with them thousand times, no problem. You skirt around it thousand one time, you're going to hit rock bottom because the universe is going to be like, literally, dude, I've given you a thousand chances to figure this out and you're still ignoring it. We're going to pull the carpet out from under you now. So you can't ignore it. And that's okay. Yeah. You said that some, that's, I've had to hit rock bottom a few times. Sometimes that's what has to happen if that's what you need, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and so part of some people can all of a sudden realize that they need to start watching themselves before the thousand one times happens and the carpet is pulled out from underneath them and their life is in shambles because they ignored, they ignored the, the illusion of the ego or the misalignment with, with their own consciousness. Or they were just too happy uh, putting up with it. You know? yeah. <laughs> just like, oh, well, you know, not the worst thing in the world, working a job. I hate living in a, living in a place that I don't like with, with two people I don't like either. You know, <laughs> that, that was what happened to me. <laughs> and I just ignored it for too long. And this and, is uh, fun. It's also, it's like, you know get into a stage where you can have a bit of fun with it and just sort of say oh shit it's happened again um, i'm gonna do a britney hit me baby one more time you know um because it is it's like you don't have to beat yourself up about it again there's no one that hasn't been there i think i'm gonna use idris the wonder cat who i can't stop talking about so I've got my new cat, Mitzi, who is amazing. And Idris has and Pumpkin, the two boys, have had their nose put. They, they're fine, sort of, but they're exerting their authority. So even though they're neutered, they're spraying everywhere. But he's not bothered about it. He's not worried. He's not holding on to any guilt about it, even when mummy tells him off and everything. So it's like, own it. Own it. Cats own their actions and they're quite proud of it. So just because it might not be our expectations of what we want, they're like, I'm doing it. She's in my territory. She needs to look at me. I'm the boss. I'm the man. Um, but, uh, you know, have a bit of laugh with it because the difficult thing is, is when you then go over and over and over it in your head and you keep yourself in that cycle of self-perpetuating misery, if you've done something, <laughs> that spread wheel all over my son's bedroom, so, yeah, it was me. I'm a man. I enjoyed it. On I go with it. You know, don't. Humans don't, don't pee everywhere, humans. Please don't pee don't everywhere. I haven't put that across very well. But the whole point is, it's the emotion of guilt that we hold on to that does the damage. Because what's past is past. Don't hold on to the emotion of it longer than you need to to learn the lesson. And then give yourself a pat on the back, let it go. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say too, you know, in any spiritual practice, they're going to tell you of self-study that there is no finish line. Mm -hmm. There's no finish line. And so this is constantly a practice. It's constantly, con it's uh, 15 years I've been doing, I've been involved in my own self-study for 15 mm -hmm. years. And literally I still find myself getting caught up on the same crap I did my first year. Mm -hmm. And it's usually at a time when I think I've mastered some sense of like awareness mm -hmm. that the universe goes, mm -hmm. Like my, my algebra teacher in the eighth grade, whenever somebody would like think they figured something out, they go, oh, I see, I see. And Mr. Van S would say, I see, said the blind man as he put down his cane and walked into a wall, you know, that, <laughs> you know, it's, it's having that humility. And I think the more you practice like that, you know, when you have that humor, when you could go like, oh man, I totally thought I'd worked on this, but mm, jokes on me, you know? Um, and that's why people, I, you know, Guruji used to say like, when you practice one month, two months, 10 years, no use, whole life, whole life is practice, whole life. And so, yeah, you're never going to get to this point. There's no magic pill you can take that just gives you enlightenment, that just gives you this. Where's the fun in that? Where's the, there's that song. What is it, a Cheryl Crow song where she says that you're my favorite mistake? Yeah. There's a lot of mistakes that I've made in my life. And I go, I think that was my favorite mistake because that was really fun. It was a huge mistake, but in the moment it was really fun. So, you know, it's being able to like go through the process of deconstructing yourself and it can be fun. And some of the mistakes can, you can laugh at some of the mistakes, you know, and then just get back up 
and start again. The original definition of sin, you know, when, when you grow up in the West and you grow up in a predominantly Christian society, we think of these sins as these like, you know, these things that thou shalt not do or thou will be cast into hell, you know? No, the original definition definition of sin was to miss the mark, meaning that you forgot who you really are and who you really are is pure loving consciousness. And if you remember that, then you carry the, the huge power of empathy, compassion, vulnerability, humility, which then means you, you start acting better. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. No one's perfect. It just means that you have more of an awareness and more awareness of your impact too, not just on yourself, but on others as well. Yeah, even, even I, I think it was you that said this right as well, uh, or about how you, you're so aware, like when you're, when you're on that, when you come from that, that place, you're so aware about your actions, even certain things like uh, what, you, what most people would, would think twice about, like killing bugs and things like that, uh, you you. You read like I go out of my way. I see an ant. I'm like, I gotta go walk around it now. You know, yes. <laughs> there, was a, there was a snail, a snail on the path yesterday, and I'm like, okay, I'll just, I'll just walk, walk over that one. But uh, yeah, I, I, I really, really don't enjoy killing things, and and it, unless I absolutely have to, like I had some cockroaches a couple of like last night or the night before that I kept in the house. I had to kind of get rid of them. You know, if I can, I put it outside. I would, but that you they're very hard to get you know like sometimes you just have to get them you know but yeah. you know i don't I, I don't i'm not proud of it but you know uh you know we're all we're all equal it doesn't matter like what what it is whether it's an ant or an elephant or you know or a human or a plant for that matter you know uh the problem is with, with humans i don't know where it came from but the majority of, like human man like human nature is very destructive and it's very yeah. much like that's in the way I'm going to get rid of that, whatever it is, doesn't matter if it's a tree or it's a, a, a you know, a, a person, a, a person. Yeah. Whatever. It doesn't matter. A village for sure. Yeah. There's been many, many, many instances where, where companies come along in certain parts of the world and just destroy a village because they wanted to get to the land or whatever. And, and we're seeing it now, in fact, with, with the flooding and all around the world in, in many places, because a lot of people here uh, in, and this happened in the bushfire, affected areas too, those people are being told they can't rebuild. They're being told that they can no longer use that land because it's a land grab, you know? So, you know, we're still seeing it. Uh, but I guess my point is that when, yeah, when you don't, when you do remember that you're, you're pure love and consciousness and you, you do act in a different way, like your, your kind of, your whole demeanor has changed. It's like, I think what, Oh, Sorry, I was just going to say, going back to the Idris example, there was a point to it because go, starting right back to where you started with your love challenge, again, how you react to a situation really tells you where you are with really seeing the eyes through love. So, you know, in our family, there's nothing Idris could do that we would judge badly because <laughs> everyone adores Idris, and, I, and I'm saying it with a joke, but it is a really good example because when, when you're seeing that being of whatever species it is through 100% pure love, you view the actions in a completely different way. Now, if that was my husband going around spraying all over the house, <laughs> I'd have a lot, lot more judgment about it. But, I, you know, I just, I think, you know, when you look and sort of say, why am I reacting to that person or that situation? What is that telling me about whether I'm coming from a heart space or not? Because, you know, if, if you really are genuinely coming from a heart space, you do not judge in the same way, do you? Yeah, when it's your well, what triggers, and I will say too, sometimes your gut will tell you to remove yourself from certain situations. Mm -hmm. And that is, and sometimes when it's telling you to do that and you don't listen to it because the ego you end up in a really bad situation, you know, and that's okay too. And you can, you can walk away from situations because you feel like you have to without actually holding on to judgment of the experience. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's learning to, 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 and it's funny, like when you, when you talk about coming from the love, the space of just pure love, it's like one of my favorite quotes from Hanuman is when I don't know who I am, I serve you. When I know who I am, I am you. And to me, that's such a powerful quote, because when we're on this path of self, of self study, of self, of, of understanding who we really are, 
we serve others. We learn how to be in that place of serving others. And then when we know who we are, we find that loving connection. We are others because we see the same. The Yoga Sutras talk about this. When you finally figure out that you are Purusha, that you're not Prakriti, you're Purusha, the Atman. Um, you see, it's like when you look behind, they say the eyes are the window to the soul. When you look beside, behind somebody's eyes and you see that spark of light, when you notice that spark of light behind somebody's eyes, it's not their spark of light that you're noticing. It's yours reflected back at you. And when you figure that out, it's so liberating. And then you start to treat others better because you know they are you and you are them. We are all just souls wearing meat cool meat suits they're they're pretty meat suits but you know they're that 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 ego is is tied up with this but it's not this right and if this is is on point with who this is it's going to see that in everybody else too and therefore it was even the yeah it's funny i'll tell you david so you don't feel bad about killing a few roaches the other morning i started the shower i usually check the the the, the shower just to make sure because in a city we get we get roaches in the city to make sure there's nothing hanging out in the shower before I start the water, I can scoop it out and bring it outside. And I just didn't even think I just turned the shower on. And all of a sudden I saw this little bug just go down the drain in it's watery grave. And I was almost crying in the shower. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I felt so bad for that little. And meanwhile, my dog tortures roaches. Like if he finds a roach, he'll torture it to death. But, but, um, but yeah, so don't feel bad. Same thing happened to me the other morning too. So, <laughs> Yeah, they're just very big. I mean, they're just, I don't know. It's the summer, you know, it's summertime. So we get a lot of roaches and they live under the house and stuff. And they're just kind of, they're always there. I have one crawl over my leg, or my foot. Uh, yeah. I didn't know what it was. And then I, I kind of moved my foot and then I, I looked behind me and this thing was scurried away. And then, and then I managed, but I managed to get it. But yeah. 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 I mean, if, if I could catch it outside, it would probably just come back into the house again. Well, the funny thing is, we hear snakes do what I used to do with the snakes and put them in the neighbor's garden. <laughs> so, my cat it just went through a stage of catching the snakes, and, and they would kill a cat. I mean, the adders would be poison enough to kill a cat, but they're unlikely to kill a, a full grown adult. And so I had to rescue them from the cat. And so I had to get rid of them quickly. So I put them next door. And then I had to phone up my, my neighbor who had two young children and say, you might want to keep your children in for half an hour. <laughs> but anyway, because the snake survived and the children are still there. So all was well. So <laughs> How big are these snakes? Pardon? How big is the snake? Oh, it really varies. I mean, one of the ones that when we first got pumpkin that he caught was literally like a good couple of feet long. So not like your Australia snakes, but for the UK, they were quite big. But the worst thing is, is instead of catching it and holding it by the head, he had hold of it right in the middle. So its head could have come around and bit him. So I was so terrified that it was going to get him. That the quickest thing I could do was grab the snake and chuck it into the next door neighbor's garden. But it did slither away. It was all right, everyone. Was okay. <laughs> Australia, you got like deadly snakes, but we had in Georgia, we had to learn like rhymes as kids because we have so many poison snakes down here too. Like we, but isn't that not a change the subject? But isn't that a different childhood? When I was a kid, I think David, I think we're the same age. When I was a kid, we had to learn um, all these rhymes about poisonous snakes because our parents literally just let us play outside without any supervision. So we had to learn these rhymes about poisonous snakes. Nowadays, I don't know if they even still teach those rhymes because kids are so monitored. So that just shows you a very different generation where they were like, you know what? These can kill you. So we're going to teach you a nursery rhyme so that when you're out there by yourself <laughs> at four or five, these six years learn, old. These, these days they learn nursery rhymes about about swapping your genders before you're the age for four or something. Honestly, it is. Yeah, the world's gone mad, though, and and we're all going mad with it. But I mean, okay, so we've been going nearly an hour. So, words of wisdom from each of us to finish off with, Bryce. Let's start with you. What would be well, some of the things you can recommend for our listeners to start doing? Well, I think the whole big thing about self-reflection is taking those pauses, like you said, and, and, and really watching your reactions and that, and if you, if you react quickly and you go, oh, shoot, I, okay, well, you just learned something, right? There's no mistakes. There's only mistakes if we let them be mistakes, right? 
and just be humble and just understand that we're all, you know, when Ram Dass says we're all just walking each other home, like we're all just walking each other home. We're not, we're going to skip, we're going to fall, we're going to run, we're going to skin our knees, but we're all in it together. And no, no, there's no human being out there who is perfect. Everyone has messed up. Everyone has gotten knocked off of knocked on their ass a few times and that's okay that's part of the journey and so just start watching yourself and don't beat yourself up and rest when you need to rest and just pause when you need to pause brilliant what about you david i think it's important to to not live up to anybody's expectations but your own mm -hmm. we can get caught up in this you know specifically for a lot of people it's um, usually the parents you know it's like oh your parents expect you to do this or that or whatever. And it's having the, the ability to say, no, that's not what I want for my life. You know, this is, uh, it, it's difficult. It's not easy because you're, you want your parents to be proud of you. Uh, but at the same time, or anybody for that matter, it doesn't matter how to be your parents, but you know, society will tell you to live a certain way too. More often than not, what your parents, the way your parents want to live and the way society would say you should live is usually the same thing. But but uh, even if even if your even if your authorities are, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, think differently to, to the majority of society, if that's not what you if that's not what you want, you know, then then it's not what you should be doing. I think my my point is get very clear on what you want out of life, and and then figure out a way to to get there, and also know that the the first the first. Uh, the first method of getting there may not may not work. Maybe the second won't work. Maybe the third won't work either. But who knows? You have to keep trying things until you find it. Until you find something that works for you. But um, I think clarity is the main message, and and just being true to yourself. Yeah, it's so important. I appear with both of those, and the only thing I would add to that is try and enjoy the journey. You know, you've got to enjoy the journey because I, I hate saying you've got to do anything. But the thing is, is we talk about this all the time. If you switched on a brilliant film and they told you the ending straight away, what would be the point? The point is the journey that you're going through. And what I would say is embrace those friends like I do with you two that can go through that journey with you and be really authentically themselves. So none of us are trying to change each other. Um, you know, we're, we're all on our own journeys. And I was doing a bit of work on my book that I've started today, and I added a little bit to your favourite saying, your favourite random ass saying, Bryce, we're all just walking each other home with our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, so fi find your dog, find your and, cat, find your Daniel best Craig. friend. Pardon? And Daniel Craig. <laughs> no, he's on my lap, Dave. <laughs> so, okay, so those helicopters keep there's coming. There's Why he can't find me? Effect. I just don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we have to, you know, yeah. When I'm talking about the dreams, mine are different to yours. <laughs> so, so on that note, let's <gasps> we be back soon, hopefully with our lovely friend Medina, who is helping loads of people out as we speak. Thank you, anyone who's watched this. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch our ramblings. And um, thank you so much. Have an amazing day, David. Have an amazing evening, Bryce. And I'm thank off you. to kiss my guinea pigs and go to bed. Yes, have a wonderful night. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.